Hello, we are back. And uh, let's go over the 2020 NFL offseason with the premier part of the day. Three quarterbacks out of their prime are constituent free agents to go to anywhere they please. Philip Rivers, Tom Brady, and Drew Brees. One is 41, one is 43, and one is pushing at 39, I think. Uh, it's just an interesting offseason. Well, um, most of the controversial uh, stuff being on Tom Brady, seeing hub his age on the scheme he'll play on the team that may be more fast-paced. It's just controversial, even though he put up an average season in New England, but a majority of it was either getting sacked, incomplete passes, or that one night in Miami. Tom, Drew Brees just came out of a disappointing wild card appearance, as well as Tom Brady. Under <clears throat> underestimating the competition, throwing a bad pick, uh, getting sacked numerous amounts of times, uh, Alvin Kamara obviously not being much. I uh, think of like two incomplete passes when he gave it to Michael Thomas, knowing that he didn't have that many weapons, even though they had Jared Cook as well, but that wasn't obviously good enough. <clears throat> Should Davion on Clowney after having being a rental? Uh, being the key component to some defensive teams, people wanted him to either go to Miami or Seattle, set up to Seattle. Decent divisional round showing, but showing of his uh, incompetence, cheap shots. Uh, not the, still one of the best linebackers you can get in the league, and obviously a tremendous help to push a pass rush. I see him going somewhere, but we're going to go over Greg Olson, our first signing of the NFL season of the NFL 2020 offseason, and he goes to the Carolina Pan <laughs> from the Carolina Panthers to the <laughs> Seattle Seahawks. They get another washed up tight end for, now, I don't know if that's pennies on the dollar, seeing how Greg Olson's contract, and this is already coming off the early retirement of Luke Keekley. And then the leave of their best head coach they had in franchise history out of Ron Rivera going to the freaking Redskins of all team, where Josh Norman used to play. And now Josh Norman was released from the Washington Redskins and obviously maybe going to, uh, you know, either I can see these teams go for him. The Panthers might go for him again thanks to rebuilding up to a new unit. We don't know what's going to happen in Cam Newton. <clears throat> The Jets, because they need secondary help. The Jaguars, because they lost Jalen Ramsey, and they need somewhat of a face and somebody aggressive on their sec on their on their defense. That's the only place I see them go. Or he goes to the Giants and he f that place is up. We have Greg Olson, He's still thirty four. He put up a uh, average five hundred and ninety seven yards with only two touchdowns. He lost. He he was barely a factor into the offense, playing a majority of his career in uh, Carolina. I thought he was more productive in Chicago. Just basic check down schemes. The guy is obviously more threatening when he was playing, but he had some productive times in Carolina as well, even making it to the Super Bowl. So, is he still a prime asset? He's not a top 10 tight end anymore. Still a decent red zone threat. Greg Olson, obviously been shown to be injury prone these past three seasons, as well as Luke Keekley and now Cam Newton is in his 30s, and we don't know if he's still going to be the, in the next generation of the Panthers for the 2020 season. I, I, I feel like everything's uh, substantial for anything at this point because uh, Cam Newton's have some worries for me because uh, I feel like he's not good at short passes. Overrated in his running ability, even though I know his athleticism, the guy's pushing in his 30s. Obviously, you don't suspect him to use that kind of play style before, even though he's a big six foot five dude and he can literally hurdle for everybody, but that's not gonna help you. <clears throat> Michael Big was supposed to have a super team back in 2013, and the dude barely even was healthy for a few games until Nick Foles took control. It it, it it's a it's a bit worrying. 
look me up real quick. Because uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to the they like go over what happened. Because for the final thirteen games of the season, Newton came from an zero and four start to the last three games, like the last several game, like going to a a six and four start as soon as Kyle Allen took control, being a sophomore quarterback and nearly being Mr. Irrelevant. And now here he was from throwing two touchdowns, only playing like week 17. And now here he was in the 2019 season, putting up tw tw 17 TDs. Freaking amazing completion percentage. That depleted down later in the season, but he was actually playing nearly a full schedule of football. And he went for 3,000 yards in just his first career start. Do I think he's just an average second stringer? Practically. Shows potential that he can be a good uh, second string? Yes. Has always to back it up. He can score. I saw his Packers game that I think was a tremendous highlight. The time when they got snuffed by the Buccaneers, he showed out. Kyle Allen has potential. And he's only 23. There's also AJ Green. I've been hearing some information about him. Some guys that I also think are important is Byron Jones, Eric Armstead, Jameis Winston, because he's <clears throat> on to his rookie contract. Uh, he's off from his rookie contract. He's 26 and he put up a 5,000 yard season, but the most inconsistent stat line ever. Like you've, you've parallel parked. It's just that you still hit the cars 1,700 times. And now it's the verge of explosion. Ooh, that's how it is. And, it sh and Winston shows from terrible read. It seems like he's just in a terrible kind of uh, scheme that views him as a pocket passer. That can't utilize athleticism as much. And he shows that he has an arm. It just works in co It's just not that... Enlightening of an offense, especially for a guy like Jameis. And, and I think he's a basic quarterback. He does have some flaws in his own, but uh, 5,000 yards, I feel like somebody might pick him up. I think Tampa has got to pick somebody else. Somebody. There has to be somebody better. They can either get Dalton, the Jets either can get Dalton, because Sam Darnold has not been producing at all. And I can just display it right now and read you the stat line. And people think stats matter. Matter in sports, stats matter. They do. Not only do they describe you how progression shows, but how regression shows, and it also regress over his play play style. How he's super inconsistent. Can't throw a curl route without over or under throwing it. Obviously, cannot check down properly. And plus, his receiver receivers were kind of trash. He's just coming after an average sophomore season, but he also came with 14 games. He threw 19 touchdowns with 13 interceptions, over, over playing nearly a full season. He's already 11 and 15 of a starter. His completion percentage has progressed, but oh my god, they play so bad. They play so bad with him. It, and it's super inconsistent. I think it's better if we just get a rental quarterback that can sign for us for like three years, let him learn from it. Sam, Sam Darnold can hold up, and I think Andy Dalton would be the best person. It's a decent passing offense that we run with. Our running offense is continuously targeting up the gut, even though we have no offensive line. Le'Veon Bell struggle off that. Handoff Handoff routes, uh, handoff passes, and hitch pass, hitch handoff uh, runs can't work. 
Hitch talks runs cannot work, and our offense was struggling for the first half of the season until we got it going, but that was against inconsistent defenses. So it's not technically like the Jets were good. We went 6-10. and ten. What do you do? Anybody else could go 6-10. and ten. We, 49ers went 6-10. and ten. We just won our last <clears throat> five games because uh, Jimmy Garoppolo was starting, and we actually had a quarterback other than C.J. Beathard that, that could throw the football accurately. Oh, goodness. And we are losing a good D, D lineman that was part of our front seven. Tremendous effort. Our Eric Armstead always been <clears throat> efficient, but injury-riddled quarterback. I mean, the lineman. Austin Hooper had a tremendous season. They have to resign him. Hunter Henry. Bud Dupree, Matthew Judden, Derrick Henry, obviously going to resign after a Superman effort in the playoffs, making them go to the Super near, near the AFC Championship. That was amazing. Went for over 100 yards. They had to put up for one of their games a goal line formation just to flat out just stop him from running from the outside. He shows that much of skill. He's going to be an MVP soon. Safety Anthony Harris, Robbie Anderson, former Jet. Obviously one of the better receivers. Who's next? James Bradbury, cornerback. Emmanuel Sanders, that was uh, on rental. From over the deadline when we traded from the Denver Broncos after he depleted. I think he got like three touchdown pass catches and then he barely did anything else. Teddy Bridgewater. And he vowed to stay with the Saints after a great stretch of the past six games. He played amazing football. Leonard Williams didn't show much. Uh, Littleton, Corey Littleton has to be picked up somewhere. He has to. As well as Cal Van Noy has to be resigned. Haha, -ha, Clinton Dix. Don't know many teams that have a safety issue. Sadly. It was either the Raiders had a safety issues, except they have a young backfielder. They have. <clears throat> An average front seven, but barely nobody knows their name. They need somebody for that defensive identity. Eric Ebram, that had some good seasons with the Colts, especially when in, when Andrew Luck was still playing. Bradley Roby had like a, like three, I think two picks when he faced off against Jameis Winston, and then he had some upset. <laughs> then he had some upset pick sixes. I think he even picked up a bad pick six from Matt Ryan like week 17, the last game of the season before they hit up the playoffs. <clears throat> Graham Glass, no one cares who's ever on the Lions. I don't care. Let me just look up Bradley Roby's performances. I just want to understand, like, who in the world is vouching for the Lions offseason. I mean, the only team that has, like, the biggest cap and, like, the guys that are, like, hyped enough over the offseason to go, like, full-on blow their money on is going to be uh, the Colts. They have a basic offense. They started as well, 6-4. and four. Lost their last couple of games until they beat the Jaguars. I think they upset it. Houston. They come around upsetting all these teams, even upset the Colts, and then lose their last, like, three games straight and fell off from the wild card, and then from the playoff hunt, like, week 14, week 15, completely fell off because Jacoby Brissett was just getting snuffed around the pocket. They're, they couldn't stop anybody. Because Roby just played only 10 games. Yeah, he got two picks. And he got a couple tackles. He he wasn't that he wasn't that effective, sadly. 
You only had a one QB hit. Yeah, not that, not that much. He hasn't been that uh, effective over his first time in Houston. And these are off like the times when he was in Denver. Like that's why he's the most notable, and he was a good cornerback pickup. And I and that was like at the time when I thought, oh, they're gonna resign Tyrant Matthew. We now we have like a great front seven, a great line, our great linebacker duo, and plus one of them can be an edge rusher. They are totally making it to the AFC Championship. Then the Titans happen. Then no, then the cheats happen in the divisional round, and everything went to hell. Everything went. To hell, oh my god. Joe McCoy that had a decent season in in Carolina kinda had a couple like I think one, three sacks. He there there was barely much to be notable from the pass rush going into the Panther season. I mean the biggest signing they had was uh the freak was Gerald McCoy after his uh, tenure in Tampa Bay. So I, I just want to get that uh, straight. That uh, they weren't anticipated except the great offensive season. Some people think that Christian McCaffrey was enough for offensive player of the year. How can you be that consistent in the receiving and catching and receiving yards? I would give Michael Thomas in person that title, that, that <clears throat> offensive player of the year title. Christian McCaffrey he had a good like seven eight games in a row playing like over a hundred yards with carries because he was the only source of offense. He really was. But here they were. They ended five and eleven. And this is like their second season following falling down after having a few up and down seasons. So they've been inconsistent, but they went to at least second to the top of the division. Now it's been since twenty sixteen. After a post Super Bowl appearance when they went fifteen and one, they went six and ten. And then they've been pseudo inconsistent since the dynamic of uh, Christian McCaffrey, his first year with the Panthers, following up with an average season, and Kyle Allen's resurgence. I mean, surgence to a starting role after Cam Newton's injury. And he was having some good games. He was. The most notable one was the Packer, maybe the Packer game because probably it was just snowing and I was just paying attention because it was, I think, a comeback drive after it was like 17 to 24 and the Packers still snuffed them. So I was like, oh my god, they really trying to make a playoff berth. And then they lose those types of games. And this was off them having good performances, but they followed up. Look! They, oh my god. Oh boy, they started it off with Two and four. This was off Kyle Lallen starting, snuffing Cardinals, Texans, Jaguars, Tampa. Then the bye week happened, and then they had competition that they forgot they had. Losing to the Packers in the close one, then losing to the Falcons in the now they got shut out by the Falcons, then losing in close ones in shootouts against the Saints and the Redskins. Falcons falling off twice. And then going 5-11. and 11. After the last game against the Saints. Oh, boy. I'm not gonna, like, shake him off. I'm Kyle Allen did put up a 3,000-yard season. His first time actually starting more than two games. And Christian McCaffrey had an offensive season going for 1,000 yards. Off 106 receiving or receiving uh, re receptions as a halfback, that has to be an that's an accomplishment in his own right. Even for a halfback, that 
There hasn't been a team like that since the freaking Vikings. When they had Christian Ponder and Teddy Bridgewater as the starting quarterback. Curtis Samuel was a good receiver. DJ Moore had some deep threat plays. One for in a thousand yard season. Colin Jones, Greg Olson, Ish Thompson wasn't that effective. Let me just look at Eric Reed. It's like his eight. I think it's like his tenth. I think it's like his ninth season with the Panthers or something. Played a full season and barely did much. Shaq Thompson playing tremendously. Luke Keekley getting injured. I mean, trying to like restrict the injury, even though he's been the best part of stopping the run. Trey Boston, James Bradbury, that's on the, that's a free agent. Ross Cockrell, former Steeler. He had some. He had a few good games off early in the season. Then he fell off and barely could ta tackle a soul from the deep field, just like Trey Boston and Dante Jackson and Bruce Irvin. And just, yeah, just the secondary could not tackle a soul if a receiver catches the football, to be honest. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's like my thought on the Olsen. Then you lose everybody. You're going to lose a good d defender. You're going to lose Luke Keekly of all people, at 28. The guy has at least three, four more years of football left in him. If it wasn't for the injuries, he made a great life decision and a great career decision. I wish the best for Luke Keekley like I do for Andrew. Look at anybody else who retires early in a great pro career, trying to see if they can walk. And that's what I wish. Uh, <clears throat> in the e Greg Olson, oh boy. And we don't even know what's going to happen to Cam Newton after a rough season. Only playing like, th like three, four games until... Yeah, he played only like three games until Kyle Allen took his position. So that was, uh, this is kind of rough. Christian McCaffrey's going to be paid a whole heap of money, even though he's in a rookie contract. Oh my God. This is going to be the biggest thing for the Panthers to deal with. But that's my thoughts on the <clears throat> whatever in the hell uh, my take on the Greg Olson signing. This is obviously an interesting signing. I mean, for the Seahawks. Oh, God. Seattle Seahawks, they made the wild card. You, you should be grateful, Seattle. You get another has-been injury-prone tight end that hasn't been that consistent. In years. You ended up with an 11 and 5 season. You beat my Niners. My Niners. You beat my Niners? Seattle? You think you're good? Kind of were good. You had some great games, but that came off DK. <laughs> DK. Oh my god. DK, he played tremendous. He played tremendous. Shut the fuck up. They had some great games. I think some I remember was against their, their big upset win against Cleveland. Their tough, close one they had against us back at week. I think that was week 13. No, that was about like week. Yeah, that was before Hawaii week and week 10 after we came like seven straight wins. Like nine straight wins before we got upset against Seattle. Came back against Philly, um, Minnesota. We lost to L. We lost to LA after we snuffed them like week. F we beat them earlier in the season. We just whatever, bro. Whatever. We we clinched playoffs, but I was upset that week. We we fell we fell down after a shocker pick and losing to Arizona. But it's cool because we upset it. We upset it, Seattle. Oh boy. 
But but they had some good games. I'm gonna say it. They had some great games. Had a great tremendous offense. A quarterback, uh, four thousand yards. Could have been MVP. Five picks. Great completion percentage. Rolls out the pocket and he can do almost anything with the football. I felt like Russell Wilson should have been MVP, but thanks. Uh, <clears throat> Lamar Jackson was such a highlight shaker and made the <clears throat> Ravens been, been more notable for being an offensive team, even though they had a defensive run, a secondary that's scary. After just picking up a Rams corner, Marlon Humphrey showing out. Just a great defense. And after getting rid of C.J. Mosley and Terrell Suggs, you knew something different was going to happen. And they came into Chris Carson, going for a thousand yard season, a twelve hundred yard se twelve hundred yard season with seven TDs. You also have. <clears throat> you want me to say it? You want me to say it? David Morneau, DK Metcalf, going for after starting fifteen games, he went for a freaking. Oh my God, the dude got like. Oh, wow, he went for, like, a couple touchdowns into the season. He had, like, at least seven, eight. He had at least over ten. And he rushed with the ball very little. They kept using wildcat plays. There was also Tyler Lockett that was a threat. But uh, DK Metcalf, yeah, 7 CDs, 900 yards, as well as Tyler Lockett that was used over the red zone for deep plays. They they played tremendous games. This, oh, wow, the stat line is terrible. But still, it, it showed how threatening they are as a dynamic. That whole line needs to be fixed. Stat I mean, Malik Malik Turner turned up in some games. David Moore had a couple good games in him. Rashad Penny and Chris Carson was a good rotation from attacking up the gut. And some good rushing yards. They only got like one like one notable game, and that was their week seventeen game when they had to rematch against the 49ers. And they had to run the ball down the Fucking goal line, and they did touchdown off a uh, beast mode, and that was technically borderline useless for the rest of the season. It was good to see beast mode wearing a Seattle Seahawks jersey again, just for memory's sake, and just to know that he wore the same uniform that it did to snuff us in the NFC Championship, like 2015. So I guess I don't want to toss this little small box thing and break it. <clears throat> also, Bobby Wagner with that tremendous season. Wells. I'm about to call Michael Kendrick. Shaquille Griffin showed up as a great ball swatter. I think he's... <clears throat> obviously, there's reasons why he's better than his other brother. KJ Rott. Trey Flowers that showed up some great sex and became a great edge rusher. Jadavion Clowney. Cody Bartons. Got just great front seven that showed up in the secondary was there when it counts. Greg Olson's going to do wonders better than their tight end that they previously had other than the last couple seasons. They had Jimmy Graham. That G Jimmy Graham showed up for the got signed to the Packers. After like five seasons with the Seahawks. We had Nick Vinnett. They got like a few touchdowns. His time with the Packers and um, with the Seahawks. Then Willie Disley. Will Dis Will Disley. That they were okay. They just weren't that. Good at getting routes done or catching the ball when he needed a post route. So getting a tight end like Rick Olson is needy, especially to get get up those yards and obviously for blocking reasons. So I can see why you needed Olson. 
but he's washed up, and I feel like he's going to get injured, especially in a really hungry NFC East. Like, now we got the Rams that are trying to fight back for a playoff position. 49ers are obviously coming back from a Super Bowl appearance. And the Cardinals, because they actually are showing up, and after a decent season, even knowing that they had to rebuild, it's good to know that, you know, Kyler Murray... A good, a decent young secondary led still by Patrick Peterson. Hopefully he gets traded. <laughs> and you just got Jay Ajayi. So, yeah. It's going to be an interesting, interesting NFC East to see the fight happen. But that's about it. It's a 30 minute video. I didn't even want it to go for that long. But uh, you get what you get, and I get upset. That's it. Hope you like the DST show. Shouldn't even be this long of a talk to talk about Greg Olson, but you want to get more in football talk. Thanks to the NFL offseason, there's still NBA talk to go around. <clears throat> maybe go over maybe hockey. I always do false profit promises with hockey, I guess. Not much. I'm, I'm a bit upset over my devils. But that's about it coming from me. Just like, comment, and subscribe and join the TST Nation.